Hey, today I'm going to go over creating a simple magazine cover in Adobe Photoshop. Now, sometimes you'll use Adobe Illustrator, uh, Adobe InDesign, or Adobe Photoshop, depending on what you want to create. Um, if you're creating a publication, you'll often use Adobe InDesign, especially with a lot of text and uh, text flow and formatting. Now, as far as a poster goes, you can create one in Photoshop as long as it's high resolution enough. In this example, I'm going to actually be creating a little bit lower resolution just to keep the files more manageable, but I'll go over the difference and as far as PPI and uh, what you want to set that if you're going to go actually print it as opposed to displaying it on the screen or on a website. Um, this is the final product, what it'll look like. Notice that we have a cover story that's prominent. It's not that all the stories are the same. We actually have one that we're emphasizing over the others. We have the title up at the top. We have kind of complementary colors here with blue and orange. And then we have two stories that are kind of like in this issue. Pretty basic, doesn't have like the barcode and the price and things like that. But hopefully going through this quick tutorial, you'll learn a couple um, techniques in Photoshop when designing something like this. Go ahead and download the support files. I have three in here, just three shots I took. Uh, one of kind of like a summer scene with you know a chair next to the barbecue by a lake then my friend Kelly with the light bulb doing the I got an idea face and then also uh, you know a telephone pole that I just randomly shot one day so go ahead and open those up and what we want to do first is go to file new and then under presets, if you go to US Paper and then set it to tabloid, it's going to be 11 inches wide and 17 inches uh, high. Uh, as far as the resolution, you do want to keep that 300 if you're actually going to go print it and want it nice, um, high resolution photos and files on there. For this example, however, and for the, the support files, I actually downsize them a little bit as far as the resolution goes so they're more manageable. Um, I would go ahead and go and just set it to 72. So you have 11 inches, 17 inches, then 72 pixels per inch. And go ahead and hit OK. And the first thing you want to do is also, of course, open up your three support files. And the one of Kelly, we do want that as our cover. So go ahead and click and drag that off the, the tab. If you're using CS5 like myself, it might be set to default to go up on the tab like that. And you could copy and paste this, or you could even go to File Place. But what I'm going to do is just use the Move tool and click and drag it from here over to our file. All right, this is going to be kind of the background. And I actually move it up a little bit. So you have a little bit uh, room on the bottom there for also in this issue. Now, so we have two, file, uh, two layers, background layer and layer one. And you'll notice we have these two photos, but they're at different proportions as far as the height and the width. One is more portrait land, the other one's more landscape. Uh, what you want to do is have a preset crop in order to have them the same size. So if you see in our example, these are the same exact size. And consistency is one of the four design principles you want to use in here. You know, proximity, you want things that are related closer together still have breathing room, some white space if relevant, um, don't have too much clutter, at least one pica in between all elements as far as uh, publication design. And you also want to incorporate alignment to make sure these are aligned and also a balance between variation and contrast and on the other hand consistency, uh, a uniform look. Alright, so we do have some, some consistent fonts, uh, font sizes, font styles, and then also consistent as far as the, the placement of these photos down here and also their size. If you had three or four photos down at the bottom and they were all barely off, they were either not aligned or they're not the same size, it wouldn't look as good. So go ahead and go to the crop tool. Then up at the top set it to 72 pixels per inch just like our example and do 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Make sure you type in PX there because if not it might put in 200 inches and it make a huge file. So go ahead and click and drag around here and then double click in the middle and we're actually going to drag this over with the move tool to our new file here. There. 
and then I'm going to close that out. Then the other one, go ahead and crop again, and the preset should be up there already, 200 pixels by 200 pixels and 72 pixels per inch. Pull it down here. And then I'm going to move this over here. All right. And be sure to move this other one so it's slightly over here. You could measure it with the rulers if you want, but I just want it so it's a little bit uh, halfway over. And we have some room. This should be about the same width as this space over here. You want some room for this text as well. So what we want to do first, if you look at a other example, we have up at the top uh, that orange color and then the blue down here. So what we want to do, go ahead and just click new layer. You could create a shape, but I'm just going to do a fill of an area. Um, so move this new layer to the top and click and drag with the marquee tool. And then choose, I'm actually going to remember this one, I'm going to copy that for later, but um, I'm just going to choose this orange right here and do Alt Backspace. It'll be Option Return on the Mac, and that fills that area. Then you can actually use Type Tool. Make sure you got white here to, so the because you want some contrast between the text and the background, obviously. And we're going to call this Design and Creative Quarterly. So let's go Design and Creative Quarterly. And you can press the Move tool, make sure Show Transform Controls is checked up at the top. And then you can actually click and drag the corner of it, holding Shift to maintain the correct proportion there. All right, so something like that. I'll hit Enter to apply those changes. And it's text, so it won't lose that resolution as you make it larger because it hasn't been rasterized. Um, down at the bottom, we want to type in Best Summer Freelance Design Jobs. So I'll just click with the Type tool, Best Summer. I'll make this all caps. And I'm going to make this black. And let's see. I'll switch this so it says freelance. Design jobs. All right, and then you can make that one a little bit larger as well. Now, as far as the font size, um, if you want this to be specifically the same, which that would be a good idea to have the same font size here and here, instead of creating a new text box, just press Control J or Command J on the Mac, and that will duplicate this layer and hold Shift so it's at a 45 or 90 degree angle. This is when we want the 90 degree angle. And click and drag it with the Move tool over here. Then you can double click this T over here and type in what the other one is, which is paying bills as a designer. It's supposed to be about electric bill there, but. Uh, that might not fit. Well, pretty close. Well, a little bit of breathing room, but that's fine. So I'm going to move that one over a little bit. All right. So these are aligned, and they have uh, the photos kind of preview of what's in this issue. The only thing that we're missing is down here at the bottom the text that we have. So be creative, 10 ways to spark creativity and design. What you can do is click here, type in be creative, 10 ways to spark activity and design. All right, and then you can just make it larger. You can manually make the font larger, or you can just click and drag the corner like this. And press Enter. And then with this, you could do shapes, but or you can just do new layer, drag it below this text here, and click and drag. And 
and set this foreground to that blue and then alt backspace and then that's its own layer so you could actually press control J to duplicate it bring another one down here just make bring this out just a little control J again move the next one down you want to make sure that flows off the edge there and a consistent uh, space between the elements too. All right. So that's how you create a basic magazine cover with, you know, a complementary um, colors. If you want to take it one more step further, we could make this orange down here, just like up at the top. Now, if we don't know what that is, we can press layer four, use the eyedropper tool, get that orange and then go down to the background layer and press alt backspace or option return on the Mac and then it coordinates there. So we have the blue, the orange that are complementary colors and then a nice cover story with a good photo and then we have nice strong text that's consistent and aligned and has good proximity as well. Thank you.